Okay, we've towed uh, boats and trailers all across the country, coast to coast, north to south, and uh, some of the tips and some of the things we do. And I know some of you folks, you, you might be seeing this for second or third time. If you got your tips, add them below in comments. But uh, we just kind of get everything hooked up, and then we go back and go through our checklist of kind of from bow to stern on the trailer, making sure that their lights are plugged in, our chains, safety chains are hooked up, and they need to be crossed. So for some reason, if the coupler comes off the ball, it falls down, it'll catch where those chains are crossed. If you just put them straight, it, this can uh, fall right straight through and you're dragging on the road. If you have different cars, different chains, you can you can wrap the chains a couple times if it's on a car that sits lower so you're not scraping. But from bow to stern, we check the plug chains, the hitch pin with the little uh, clip in it. We added a little zip tie so we can reach it and pull it from here. Sometimes it's hard to get your finger in there to pull that out and you bang your knuckles against one of these bits and it's like, well, just get that where you can pull it clear. Um, Safety-wise, this is rated for 3,500 pounds. You can buy a draw bar that is not rated for 3,500 pounds. So when you're buying your draw bar, make sure it's rated for the at least the capacity of what your receiver is. Same with the uh, with the hitch ball that's in here, which we didn't know for a while, probably for years. And it's like, well, this I think the one that's on here now is rated for six thousand. It's okay to go up, but don't don't tow something with a draw bar or a ball that's you know not rated for the weight you're towing. Keep coming on back. You want to make sure this is latched. And by latch, that means you physically reach under here and you feel the little, there's a little pawl that comes underneath and catches that bottom of that ball. And you want to make sure that is there. It's this little piece right here that it's underneath the ball. There have been times where that uh, gets jammed up and ends up on top of the ball and your trailer's not coupled even though it may be sitting there looking like it is it's it's not and uh, we had an event or a near event I rented a U-Haul with the auto transporter trailer attached to it and I didn't cross check what the employee at U-Haul did drove home with the trailer everything's fine as soon as I go to drive my car up on the back of the trailer the front of that load to load the car on the transporter the front of that trailer just rises up in the air and you can imagine what i'm thinking in my brain is like man i was just going down the interstate highway at 60 miles an hour and uh, if that trailer had come loose it would have been really bad could have been bad for someone who was just minding their own business so if someone else hooks up the trailer in the uh, car that you're driving you know just uh Give them a double check, you know, because they may be having a bad day. They might be thinking, them, might be hungry, hot, tired, something. Maybe didn't do their checks. Um, your jack needs to be up. If you get the little swivel trailer jack with the wheel on it. That needs to be up also. Drove, uh, drove somewhere one day with the, if it can happen, it will. So that's why you check. Drove uh, to look at a boat, pull a little trailer, and this trailer, was, I'm pulling, sounding kind of funny. Did I pull over and go, huh, that sounds weird, better check that. No, I drove the whole way, about 15 minutes, and then when I got there, I saw that I had not, I had raised the wheel a little bit, but had not swiveled the jack up all the way, so if we were hitting a little high spot in the road, the, the noise was that little wheel hitting the pavement in protest so it was a little it was a little dinged up but it was still in good shape and then the thing is um, your different states have different laws about 
how many lights you need on your trailer, or if you need trailer trailer lights at all. Some states, I think, is if you can see the vehicle brake lights, and I'm talking brake lights right now, then uh, you don't even have to have any on your trailer, or maybe just one. And I know we've all been behind some crusty looking work trailer, and they got no lights at all, and you can't. So give the people behind you a fighting chance to not run into your trailer and the cool boat you're towing to around on it. These LED lights are really nice, really bright, and highly visible. And I like where they're placed on this trailer as opposed to some that get put up here hanging off the fenders and um, in can, older incandescents. You may not see those as well. So we've checked from bow to stern and some things you are, should be always keep an eye on is tire pressures, appropriate for what load you're hauling, and uh, bearings. Make sure they're greased. You don't see grease flinging out or a trailer tire that's flat, especially if you're going long distances at highway speeds, carrying uh, weight that's, you know, approaching the max on your uh, trailer. Is with your tires in your background if they're under inflated to the point to where the sidewall is flexing a lot because of whatever boat you're carrying or fence pickets over a time over a period of time with that sidewall flexing I use my highly sophisticated graphic there that generates heat and that's where a lot of the tires blow out at is on the sidewall now these uh, special trailer tires, the ST tires, have uh, reinforced sidewalls to carry those extra loads. You, unless you really know what you're doing, you don't want to put a, well, I'll put a light truck, tight, light truck tire on there. That'll work just as good. Well, I wouldn't advise anyone to do that, but uh, to each his own. And nowadays you can get uh, radial tires. They're a better tire, it rides smoother, it's quieter. You get better gas mileage and back to a uh, tire pressure believe it or not having an old tire running at under inflated pressure it can make as much as about a half a mile per gallon uh, difference on your uh, on your fuel usage so and i validated that one day taking my trailer over to my trailer guy so he could put new switch from the bias tires to the radial ply and on the way over there, I um, was looking to see what my mileage was. On the way back, I was looking to see what my gas mileage was. And I saw that difference. So I called him back and asked him about it. He says, yep, older tires, the rubber compounds, not as good. They're a little, the old tires are a little sticky. Plus, if you don't have all the air in it, it needs. It's kind of mushy. And um, so you can save yourself a little bit of money. And uh, that boat rides super smooth super quiet kind of scary sometimes you even forget it's back there this is on our little wooden runabout so just checking overall condition make sure you're not carrying a bunch of debris in the bed of your trailer to shower the people behind you and uh, when all is checked and verified then you can go let the skipper know it's time to go hope y'all gonna have a great weekend and uh Y'all be smart out there.